Congratulations.
Town Council Vice President, Jim Lettieri. Dr. Hubert Kaplan and Mrs. Kaplan. Mr. Vincent Cabaretta. Former WHS Principal, Dr. James Noyles. And our school committee members, Town Council President, Mr. Robert Driscoll. School committee chairperson, Ms. Dawn Sullivan. Vice chairperson, Mr. Brian Perrin. Mr. William Holden. Ms. Laura Callis. Mr. Ronald Vecchia. Middle school principal, Mr. Brian Curley. Director of Pupil Personnel Services, Ms. Jennifer O'Connell. Curriculum Director, Mr. Frank Woods. Assistant Principal, Mr. Michael Capasso. And last but not least, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. John Macero. Before I address the class of 2016, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank the faculty and staff at Winthrop High School for their dedication and hard work, without which these students wouldn't be who they are today. I truly appreciate all they do for our school. In particular, I'd like to acknowledge two people that are retiring this year after long careers at Winthrop High School. Janet Baxton has been a guidance counselor at Winthrop High School for the past 15 years, in which she has guided and supported many students. Unfortunately, Ms. Baxton is not here tonight, but I'd like to recognize all the great work that she has done in our school. The other retiree has been a foreign language teacher at Winthrop High School for 28 years. Her commitment to her students, coupled with her upbeat, pleasant demeanor, is unmatched and will be sorely missed. I sincerely appreciate all of the wonderful contributions she has made to our school over the past years. Thank you and congratulations to Ms. Maria Roy. And now for the seniors. As I look out at this group of impressive graduates today, maybe become, because it's become habit, but I'm pleased to notice that not one of you has tried to smuggle a coffee into graduation. <laughs> if only that had been the case all school year. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, trying to enforce our water-only policy inside the building led to the interception of countless coffee cups from coffee-carrying seniors. You would not believe the extremes that they would go to in trying to sneak a cup of coffee into the school. Coffee cups inside coats, coffee inside bags, coffees coming through the side doors, and most common of all, the not-so-subtle coffee delivery from a friend on a free period to another who was stuck in class. Students would often make the argument that their coffee habits should be encouraged, that they were fueling themselves up for a long day of learning, that their insistence on bringing coffee into the building after being told countless times that coffee was not allowed was not a stubborn attempt at subverting school policy, but instead showed persistence, creativity, and collaboration. Well, needless to say, I wasn't buying it. But I will say, for anyone who's gotten to know the class of 2016, you could just as easily believe it. Because you showed this persistence in the hours that you spent preparing for success on your exams, the MCAS, 
the SATs, APs, midterms, and finals. You showed persistence in staying up all those late nights to finish that last piece of homework, and you showed persistence the very next morning when the alarm went off, and you pulled yourself out of bed to get yourself to school on time. It is this very same persistence that will propel you toward success in the future, and this is the very same persistence that will be required to overcome life's many challenges, obstacles, and setbacks. And creativity, I've seen your creativity on full display during fundraisers, class projects, science fairs, National History Day, drama productions, art exhibits, and the pep rally, and other countless occasions in which you added your own unique set of skills, talents, and personality to make these events a success time after time. These same creative gifts will serve you well in the future when you are faced with problems that seem to have no solution or challenged with decisions about your true path in life, or when you are asked for guidance from others who are facing similar obstacles that seem too huge to overcome. But over the past four years, what has been most central to your success is your collaboration with each other. In everything that you have done, in the classroom, on the field, in the rink, on the court, and on the stage, you have done together. You have boosted each other up when you saw a fellow classmate in need, and you have leaned on each other when you were too weary to stand alone. And this sense of teamwork, this togetherness, this ability to know when to stand strong against the grain and when to compromise for the greater good, to know when it is time to speak up and to know when it is time to listen, will be the crucial quality that serves you best for success in the future. So, class of 2016, maybe I was wrong about the coffee. Maybe you were right. You have proven through your persistence, your creativity, and your collaboration that all of those arguments you made to me while I was prying the iced coffee from your hands were valid. Because these are the virtues and the values that got you here. And they are the qualities that will ensure that your future becomes the one that you dream of. In fact, let me buy your first cup of coffee as high school graduates. Please reach under your seats. Under your seats, you will find an attached gift card for the purchase of one free or hot iced coffee from the Winter Book Depot. They're all there, just keep looking, you'll find them. Everyone has one. Please accept this small token of my appreciation for all of the great contributions you have made to Winthrop High School over the past four years. I wish you all the best of luck in the future. Thank you and congratulations. At this time, I'd like to introduce to the podium Superintendent of Schools, Mr. John Macero, to address the class of 2016. Good evening. Honored guest, Town Manager, Town Council President, Town Council Vice President, Police Fire Chief, School Committee Members, School Administrators, Principal Matthew Crombie, parents, teachers, and students. It is my great pleasure to speak to you, our graduates, as you end your days at Winthrop High School and venture off to the next stage of your journey in life. While it's sad to leave your friends, teachers, and family, it's also exciting to think what lies ahead. But first, if I may, I'd like to congratulate the parents, guardians of our graduates. Without your support and encouragement over the last 13 years, this day would not be possible. 
so I hope you'll take your time to enjoy your accomplishments as well. And graduates, I hope you'll express your gratitude to your parents for all they have done. One other special thanks goes to our Viking Pride organization. For the past 12 years, you have been a true partner to education. Thank you for all you have done for all our students. <laughs> to our high school faculty and staff and their colleagues throughout the district, I want to thank you for your efforts in leading our students to this glorious day. Your undying desire to bring out the best in every young mind is commendable and worthy. And to Principal Crockery, your dedication, patience, commitment, and most importantly, leadership to all our students is one of true generosity. Your endless desire to make sure that all students are successful while under your tutelage is a true example of Winthrop pride. I'm proud to call you principal of Winthrop High School and look forward to our continued working relationship for many years to come. And now, to the class of 2016. Throughout your history of Winthrop Public Schools, you've accomplished many firsts. You were one of the first classes to com complete both the William P. Gorman and Arthur T. Cummings. You were the first class in grade eight to travel to Washington, D.C. And yesterday, you became the first graduating class to begin a new tradition by parading through our elementary schools so that we, the staff, faculty, and students could honor your accomplishments. I hope as you walk through the halls of your past, it allowed you to understand clearly what our objective has always been, which is to see you graduate. Thank you for allowing our staff and students to share in your success. A lot has changed over the last few years. A new middle high school building was voted overwhelmingly by residents of Winter. An exciting adventure lay ahead. However, your class would bear the burden of giving up your junior and senior year and what became your home. You were going back to your old stomping grounds, the middle school. I would love to say that you all had no problem with this change. But then, I'd be telling a tale. As expected, you did not want to leave a building you had grown to love, and in all fairness, wanted to finish it. However, you rose above it. You made that building your own. You were a class act from the get-go. I, as well as the town of Winter, thank you for your sacrifice. It is ironic that the last graduating class of the old, old high school is exactly 50 years to the day of the first graduating class of the old, old high school. An overwhelming majority of you will continue your education. We at Winter High School are very proud of that. As you leave us and move on, there is one important lesson that I hope you carry with you, and that is to continue to make good choices. We are all confronted by countless choices each day. Some have minimal consequences, while other decisions can be life-changing. And while some of those choices may impact our lives today, other choices may not affect us for years to come. The important thing to remember is that we are a product of the choices we make. Each decision helps to define who we are and how we're different from one another. Making good choices begins with taking charge of the decision-making process. Make decisions that are consistent with your core belief and values and always consider the consequences. We no longer can live in a moment without regard to the effects we have on ourselves and others. You've seen social media's power to spread contempt and discord. 
Be the generation that improves the public discourse. We believe in you. Thank you, and best of luck. And now we will begin the presentations of awards and scholarships. First up, we have the Winthrop Lodge of Elks Beta Award in the amount of $1,000 goes to Samantha Capone. The Winthrop Lodge of Elks Epson Award for $1,000 is awarded to Matthew Feely. The Priscilla Sowen Holt Memorial Scholarship for $1,000 is awarded to Elma Dulavet. The David Joseph Sawin Memorial Scholarship for $1,000 is awarded to Erin Lavigier. The Clark Sawin Memorial Scholarship for $1,000 is awarded to Shannon Mahoney. The Loretta Sawin Pietrick Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is awarded to Brianna Bocchio. <laughs> there are four recipients of the Quest in Question Club International Prize, each for $1,000. Our first recipient is Samantha Capone. Our next recipient is Meg Dolan. The next recipient is Emily Kilroy. And our final recipient is Emily McGovern. The Order of Sons of Italy Winthrop Mixed Lodge number 2057 Past President's Award for $1,000 goes to Gabriella Massa. The Henry F. O'Connell Knights of Columbus number 162 scholarship for $1,000 is awarded to Matthew Feely. The Sandra Stoltzberg Schumann Memorial Scholarship for $1,000 is awarded to 
Olivia Grillo. The Rona Mayo Town Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is awarded to Julia Duplin. The Robert Perry Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is awarded to Julia Duplin. The Randall and Louise Wood Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is awarded to Gabriella Massa. There are three recipients of the Marie C. Petrilli Cancer and Research Treatment Memorial Fund Scholarship, all for $1,000 each. Our first recipient is Brianna Bocchio. Our second recipient is Shannon Mahoney. Our third recipient is Francesca Vigliotta. The East Boston Savings Bank Charitable Foundation Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is awarded to Brian Heron. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. and Mrs. Kaplan to the stage to present their scholarship. There are two recipients of the Dr. and Mrs. Nathan A. Kaplan and Family Health Science Scholarship in the amount of $1,000. Our first recipient is Matt Bruno. Our second recipient is Brooke Batchigalupo. The Winthrop Improvement and Historical Association Scholarship for $1,000 is awarded to Julia Tracy. The Robert Capeza Scholarship for $1,000 is awarded to Alexis Joyce. There are two recipients of the Michael Piccarillo Memorial Scholarship, each for $1,000. 
Our first recipient is Jessica Nichols. Our second recipient is Jared Galton. The Michael J. Mason Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $1,100 goes to Nicole Uccello. There are three recipients of the Stephen Coney Winthrop Youth Hockey Association Memorial Scholarship, each for $1,500. Our first recipient is Brandon Creter. Our second recipient is Nicole Uccello. Our third recipient is Matthew Sen. The Winthrop Golf Club Scholarship in the amount of $1,500 is awarded to Lillian McGrail. The Honorable John L. Murphy Jr. Scholarship in the amount of $2,000 is awarded to Mackenzie Chudina. The Evelyn and Paul W. Marks Scholarship in the amount of $2,500 is awarded to Joseph Fabiano. The Dr. Richard S. DeSelli Scholarship in the Sciences and the amount of $2,500 goes to James Forrester. The Hogan Family Scholarship in the amount of $5,000 is awarded to Lauren Aileen. <laughs> At this time, we'd like to recognize two of our students who are going to receive a perfect attendance award for their perfect attendance for the school year 2015-2016. Our first one is Jake LaFrada. <laughs> Next up for perfect attendance is John May.
now we represent our trophies and awards. The Bentley Swift Memorial Cup Award goes to Noah Hodgkins. The Wallace B. McLean Athletic Trophy goes to Mackenzie Chudina. There are two recipients, one male and one female, for the Francis Spear Redding Award and Trophy. Our first recipient is Daniel Delano. Our second recipient is Julia Dupin. There are two Winter Little League Award trophies for one male and one female. The biggest trophies we have. <laughs> Our first recipient is Nicole Uccello. Our next recipient is Matthew Feely. The Edwin E. McFarlane Memorial Plaque and Award goes to Jake LaFrada. The $1,000 Michael Rizzioni Olympic Spirit Award goes to Michael Norris. Let's have a round of applause for all our scholarship winners. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Jeff Beck up to the podium to introduce our salutatory. Hello. Our next speaker is the most interesting student in the world. He takes great delight in the educational process. He has taught chemistry to Mr. Ito. He is a warm, amicable, and highly analytical young man whose smile could cure cancer. A valuable asset to the classroom, his two cents are worth $37 change. A diverse intellectual idealist, while sailing around the world, he found a shortcut. This scholar delivers the goods through intellect, perseverance, and intrinsic curiosity. Presidents take his day off. A fabulous mathematician, a complete person, if he were to Pat you on the back, you would put it on your resume. Without further ado, and with great pleasure, I introduce to you 
the most interesting student in the world, and our 2016 salutatorian, Andrew Alcala. Be proud of the wonderful faces you've come to know and love. Be proud of the little child you once knew, who you've seen grow up into an independent adult. And be proud of the potential that every single one of us has. We thank you. Thank you for being there for us, for supporting us, and believing in us. Seniors, this is it. The one year we've all been told to wait for our entire lives. The one year where finally we are trying to shine. The year we thought would take forever to reach, that year is finally coming to a close. Hold on tight to that senior title, guys. It's only a matter of time before we come up here and get our diplomas and we'll be on our way. We will no longer be seniors, but instead, we'll become individuals. Some of us will become servicemen and women, others will join the workforce, and hey, so us will be freshmen again. No matter what we become, you will always be the class of 2016. Take a second to look around you and recognize this moment together. The people around you may be your closest friends. Some might be people you've never spoken a word to. Others may be people you wish to forget. And others may be people that are special enough that you'll always remember. Whatever your allegiances may be, realize that we've all come far. Each and every single one of us have made our own path through the labyrinth that is called high school. But at the end of the day, we all did it together. Cherish these final moments together. Because the fact of the matter is that everyone present here today may no longer be whole ever again. All those years spent together finally end tonight. And with it, we can probably say that our time at Winthrop High School is complete. A wise young man named James Forster III once said, School's over, dude. And he has never been so right. School really is over. And from here on out, here on out, the future is in our grasp. Through the past couple of years, we have proven to ourselves that we are capable of success. And now that we are finally graduating, we have the power to do even more. It's only a matter of choices moving forward. I hope that all of us will make great choices. Choices that will push us past our boundaries. Choices that keep our spirits high and bring our goals and dreams ever so closer to reality. At this point, the only thing standing in our way from achieving our goals and dreams ourselves. In closing, all I have to say is thank you. Thank you to all the wonderful teachers who have had the pleasure of learning from, and all the faculty who strive to go the extra mile for every student here. It's a genuine pleasure in helping students that allows students to succeed and advances education forward for our community. Next, I'd like to thank my friends. Thank you for all the wonderful memories and ridiculous moments you've shared together. Truly, all the laughs I've had with you guys have pushed me forward and have never ceased to make my days worthwhile. While I may not have been able to know everyone in the class of 2016, you are all friends in my book, so thank you for being a part of my life. While on the topic of friends, I'd like to name some very special people. Matthew Bruno, James Forster, Lillian McGregor, 
Rebecca Evans, Nikolai Okankaru, Julia Ford, Aaron Lampier, Demi Raquel, Mackenzie Julia, Bardo Petty, and Bobby Gioso. There aren't enough words to be able to describe how I feel about each and every single one of you. I am so grateful to have you all in my life, and I hope the friendships that we've crafted will persist and continue to grow. Each one of you mean the world to me, and I couldn't imagine what life would be like without you guys in it. Likewise, I couldn't imagine what life would be like without my father, mother, and sister. Thank you for the love and guidance you've given me since the day I was born. I'm so grateful to have family that supports me and always gives me their best. The love I receive from you is unmatched and drives me forward to do my best every single day. I cherish every moment we have together and I hope that with all I do, I can make you proud. I love you with all my heart. So, class of 2016, it's time to make our mark. Not a mark on an old middle school, high school that's about to be torn down, but it's time to make our mark elsewhere. There's a whole world outside of these walls, and it's about time we go see what needs to be done. Embrace freedom, accept responsibility, create adventure, and most importantly, as of all things, do it all with a smile. Thank you. Ms. Maria Flanagan into the podium to introduce our valedictorian. Good evening. I'd like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to the graduating class tonight. I am honored to present this year's 2016 class valedictorian, James Foster III. to meet James during the sophomore year in the U.S. history class. My first impression after just several weeks was, wow, this kid is ready for college. James' determination, ability, and strong work, work ethic were evident right from the get-go. The following year, I also had the opportunity to work with James in the advanced placement in U.S. history class. The determination, ability, and work ethic were the same but I also discovered an individual with a sharp wit and someone who was just genuinely nice. It became apparent quickly that James is also a person who embodies a quiet strength along with a humility of spirit. I was always most impressed that when faced with critique, James accepted it with grace and as an opportunity for growth. No excuses, no explanations, he exhibits a mature ability to self-analyze and is always seeking for ways to improve. While reflecting on James' position as the top-ranked student, I came to realize that there are degrees of separation even within that august distinction of valedictorian. What makes a valedictorian good, better, or best? In our school handbook, it lists the qualities that Winthrop High School looks for in exemplary students scholarship, leadership, service. For James, that's a check, a check, and a check. James has all these qualities and spades, as have had many of our good and better valedictorians. But what separates best from good and better? Oh yes, I handbook also mentioned the fourth quality, character. Not as easily definable as the other three, but perhaps the most important in deciding exceptional status. For James, that is a check yet again. 
Einstein tells us, quote, that most people say it is intellect that makes a great science, scientist, but they are wrong. It is character, end quote. If I may be so bold as to tweak Einstein's theory just a bit, I am happy to say that James has the perfect blend of intelligence and character and is well on his way to becoming that great scientist to which he aspires. Theodore Roosevelt believed that, quote, character is in the long run the decisive factor in the lives of individuals and nations alike. How fortunate are we that a person of strong character and conviction is leading the class of 2016 today and may, may well be a major player to lead our nation into a bright and prosperous future. I am so honored to present to you our 2016 superlative valedictorian, James Forsyth. School's finally over. School's over, dude. Where's Andrew? Where's Andrew? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for that shout out. I love you, bud. Alright. Just gonna go with this. Um, good evening, honored guests, parents, family, friends, faculty, Mr. Kami and the administration, superintendent, and most importantly, class of 2016. Thank you for granting me this tremendously horrifying honor. I would like to start off by saying that, as many of you know, this is most likely the only thing I've taken seriously in the past three months or so. And I'm doing so because I've been forced to. When I was asked what my plans were for this speech, I answered quite simply that I'm just going to be myself. I told that to Mr. Crombie, to my parents, to my family, and even to my friends. And they all had the same reaction. Cringy concern and anxiety. <laughs> I realized that I was going to have to change a few things up to satisfy everyone here. Trust me, I have had to cut a lot of jokes and comments I had in mind that I would have said on a daily basis. I'm sure people who are close to me can remember several off-color jokes that were completely horrible and still managed to make them laugh. Unfortunately for me, although I'm sure it's fortunate for most people here, I will tone myself down a little bit to give you guys not the best speech I can, but certainly the most appropriate. And yes, it's just a one-time thing. You guys can not rid of me that easily. In seriousness, however, I'd like to thank the few people here today. First, I'd like to thank my parents, Jimmy and Diane, for always being there. Love you guys. Whenever I did something wrong, I could always count on Diane slapping me on the back of the head and steering me in the right direction. Then there's my sister Jules. Thanks for putting up with me and my annoyances. I'm so proud of the beautiful young lady you've become. Also, I'd like to truly thank not only you guys in the class of 2016, but also the people who got us through these past four years, or trying to stop us from doing so, whichever one you believe. Let's hear from the faculty and staff in the high school. In all honesty, for such a small and sometimes underestimated school, we have some of the best teachers around, ones that not, are not only passionate about their subjects, but also the success of their students. We can joke all we want about our teachers, how much money can still use a translucent light projector from the 80s while she has a smart board and a normal projector she doesn't touch. Or how Mr. Bono asks us to put our phones away at least three times in class. Or how Mr. Davis is out of the school and in the tunnel at 257 every day. <laughs> but the bottom line is that these teachers do what they do because they want us to be successful. I want to personally say thank you to Mr. Beck, Mr. Ito, Mr. Campbell, Dr. Smith, Mr. Davis, Ms. Flanagan, Ms. Rupp, Mr. Lundy, Mr. Dixon, Senior Roy, of course, and also Mr. Hamilton, who took time out of his week and drove from our field to watch us graduate. Where is he? Is he here? Well, that dude's an awesome dude, wherever he is. Um, Alright, where am I? Alright. 
Each of these teachers has made a profound impact on my life over the past four years, and I can imagine the same goes for you all as well. To talk about the teachers, we also have to talk about the students. Say what you want over the class of 2016, how we all get on each other's nerves and can't agree on anything. But I can perfectly say that pretty much each and every one of you has touched my life in a positive way over the past few years. Then there were the real ones, the guys and gals that have been by my side through everything life threw at us. There are too many of you all to give shout outs. But let me tell you this, you guys mean more to me than you could ever imagine. And I can't thank you enough for your friendship. That being said, I would like to leave you all off with some words of wisdom. And man, that sounds out of for me. When you guys get out into the real world, whether it be college, work, or wherever your life takes you, it's going to take some hard and serious work to be successful. However, I do not want you guys to lose sight of what really matters. Who you are and how you make people feel. I can tell you that I worked hard all three years of high school, but not all was in school work. Yes, I worked hard in class, but I also worked hard trying to be a conscientious and all around good person. I tried hard making you guys laugh, making you guys happy, making some good and memorable times, and I hope that I have succeeded. This success, no matter how big or small it is, prides me so, so much more than anything I could ever achieve in class. Hold on to your character and your personality through the serious and grueling times. It's something that is too much to lose. I'll end off with a quote from the worst president the United States ever had, James McGinn. The test of leadership is not to put greatness into humanity, but to elicit it, for the greatness is already there. Although Mr. Buchanan was unable to summon the leadership he so eloquently spoke of to stop the Civil War from happening, thanks to Flanagan, I encourage you all to find leadership in yourselves and uncover the greatness that lives inside each and every one of you. Congratulations to Linda Piper High School, class of 2016. I'm so proud of all you guys. I love you all. I'd like to invite Mr. Zero or Mr. Capasso to join me in conferring the diplomas for the class of 2016. First up, Lucas Acosta. Rachel Ayala. Gorgeous Alavaki. Andrew Ryan Acosta. Brooke Diana Bajalupa. <laughs> Anissa Bala. <laughs> Nicole Barak. Justin Burnham Barker, conferring the diploma by his mother and his children. Nina Marie Barker. Alexander Olafano. <laughs> Brianna Nicole Bocchio. <laughs> Tyler 
Tyler John Bossy. Casey Brazel. Matthew Bruno. Samantha Ann Capone. Vanessa Yaglin Arabal. Danielle Ann Carney. Michael Francis Casey. Nikita Marie Bailey. Christian Chipman Borgia. Mackenzie Trudina. Referring to the diploma by Mr. Mark Trudino. Olivia Alice Cooney. And Julia Rose Foreal. <laughs> Pamela Elizabeth Corso. <laughs> Brandon Edward Creel. Haley J. Curtis. Jared Dalton. Kyle Edward Dalton. Carolina Pereira de Silva. <laughs> Lauren Beth Delaney. <laughs> Daniel Robert Delano. Dominic Anthony Garaka. <laughs> Michael James Diaz. <laughs> Tiana DeBenedetta. Vontel Brito de Blasio. <laughs> Nicholas Decisio. <laughs> Elma Dulovic. Conferring the diploma by Mr. Brandon Eo. Caitlin Egan. Woo! 
Rebecca Elizabeth Evans. Joseph Anthony Fabiano. Andrew Ryan Fantasia. Matthew Field, conferring diploma by his mother, Mrs. Nancy Field. Zachary Scott Fisher. Harrison Floyd. Julia Ward, conferring the call on Mr. John Sarah. Dorothy K. Morrison. James Joseph Forrester III.
Katherine Johnson, and for your diploma, Mr. and Mrs. Aaron. Alexis Lauren Joyce. Gabrielle Michalina Tennyson. Ogali Kalpan. Emily Lynn Kilroy. Alexandra Alani Kiriaki. Jake Michael Rafada. Shereen Malawi. Jocelyn Lemus. Christina Leon. Ariana Rebecca Longo. Acacia Mariah Lynch. Caitlin Rose McDonald. Kaylee McGee. <laughs> Shannon Mahoney. <laughs> Jessica Elizabeth Mallon. Joseph Martin. <laughs> Dominic Anthony Massa. <laughs> Gabriella Rose Massa, conferring the call on her mother, Mrs. Jean Massa. Sean McDonald, conferring a diploma by Mr. Dan Kerman. <laughs> James McDonald. <laughs> Emily Anna McGovern. Paige Elizabeth McGovern. <laughs> Lillian Audrey McGrail. I'm bringing a call on Mrs. John Seven. <laughs> Michael McSween. John May.
Robert Severio Miles. Charles Munzing, conferring the call on Mrs. Patricia Carter. Jose Mercia. Chris Vintari, conferring the call on Mr. David Taylor. Jessica Nichols. <laughs> Michael Joseph Norris, referring to Paul by his mother, Mrs. Catherine Norris. Nikolai Okantaru. Olivia Catherine Owen, referring to the <laughs> Elaine Fang. <laughs> Devin Carrera. Matthew 
McBurney, Oklahoma, Mr. William Holden. Lauren Maria Paoli, very well known by your mother, Mrs. Cheryl Paoli. Thank you, Mr. Capasso, and how about a round of applause for our graduates? of the Paul and Norma Foundation. 
The criteria was based on academics, financial aid, community service, student activities, and an essay. The total amount of points earned 280. Each applicant was only viewed by their student identification. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Vincent Cabaretta, Paul and Norma's nephew, to the podium to present to our 2016 Paul and Norma Fasella Scholarship recipients. Recipients, when you are called, we would ask that you remain staying up here after you receive your scholarship, so at the end we will have all 18 present. Our first recipient for $10,000 attending Appalachian State University, Ms. Haley Curtis. For $10,000 attending the Worcester Polytechnical Institute, Mr. Matthew Bruno. This 
young lady will be entering the University of Connecticut, Miss Kim West, for $15,000. This young man will be entering the University of Massachusetts at Amherst for $15,000, Mr. Daniel Delano. <laughs> this young lady will be entering Northeastern University for $15,000, Ms. Julia Tracy. $17,500 entering the College of LaSalle College, Ms. Christina Leone. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, for $20,000, this young lady will be entering Boston College in the fall, Miss Margaret Dolan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Norman and Paul Casal 2016 Award recipients. At this time, I'd like to ask senior class president Julia Duplin and junior class president Madeline Finney to come to the podium for the senior class gift. Before we conclude, I'd like to take a moment to thank the following people who helped make this night possible. Ms. Suma, Ms. Gentili, Ms. Davine, and Ms. D'Amico who helped organize this entire celebration. I would also like to thank the custodial staff, the WIP of DPW, Viking Pride, and the staff at Larson Ring, as well as the Parent Teacher Organization for preparing the ring for time. Also, I'd like to remind everyone that we are having, uh, we'd like to invite everyone back to the gymnasium across the parking lot for light refreshments following our ceremony. But, before we conclude, I'd like to invite Class President Julia Duplin to the podium for her farewell address. When I first stepped foot into Winthrop High School, I had no idea what to expect of the next four years. What I didn't know was that graduation was a distant dream, and it seemed as if it was going to take me eternity to get there. We started off as naive children in elementary school, with young romances and best friends on the playground, ready to face the world. We counted down the minutes until recess, and the days until field day, as trying to remember the roots to a game was our biggest stress. 
We reach middle school as awkward students where everyone knew everything about everybody. Eighth grade approach, and we are finally the oldest in the school again. We had the pleasure of being the first class to travel to Washington, D.C. alongside our wonderful superintendent, Mr. Nacero, where we see, finally seemed to begin to come together as a class. Finally, we reached high school, once again the youngest in the school, fearing the upperclassmen, but somewhat wishing we were seniors. As many have realized, we started freshman year with a huge class, managing to turn three lunches into four, as well as accidentally stealing the sophomore's bleachers at Pep Rally because we couldn't fit on the traditional freshman bleachers. We were told to go home at Pep Rally after we showed up in white shirts, not blue. We were taught to walk on the right side of the hallway, and we joined sports teams along with a million clubs in hopes of building up our college resumes, or at least that's what we were told. We began to realize that high school may not have been as easy as we thought it was going to be. Sophomore year approached, and we are no longer the youngest or most immature in the school, or at least that's what we thought. We knew the routine and thought we knew it well, but we were still low on the totem pole. Still the largest class in the school, we almost actually won pep rally. We went to our first formal dance social, and some of us began to figure out who we actually wanted to be as an individual. By junior year, reality sunk in. We, along with faculty, certainly did not expect our last two years of high school to unfold the way they had. Moving back into our middle school as juniors, a school we once graduated from as eighth graders, was not typically the way we wanted to spend our last two years in high school, but we managed to pull it off. And we did everything we could to make the best fit because we realized we'd never get these last two years of high school back. We had to welcome the eighth graders into our high school, which happened to adjust with difficult. We did not get to have the same walk for all four years, and we did not get to experience the joy and excitement of Pat Rally in the same high school gym. Although our high school experience was far from traditional at times, we managed to still try to do our best and make our last two years of high school unforgettable. Yes, it has been four long years with three different principals in two different schools, but that class of 2016 is why we are so great. No matter what life throws at us, we all have the ability to beat that obstacle. Along with junior year, we played a larger role in clubs, sports, and actually figuring out who we wanted to be as individuals. Some of us became leaders of the school, we took our SATs and our ACTs, eventually hoping to do well academically our junior year. It was time to start thinking of what we actually wanted to be when we grow up, and then senior year came. We couldn't believe we were seniors, once again the oldest in the school, which we dreamed of since freshman year. We were finally able to run the school with what felt like to us not a care in the world. Our plans for the future had finally become set in stone. Many of us made our final college decision, while others searched for jobs in the workforce or the armed services. We realized how fast high school flew by, and we somewhat wished we were freshmen again. We had all of our laughs this year. Our last sporting event, our last play or musical, our last club meeting. These last four years have boiled down to one single day. Class of 2016, take a second to think of how much all the hard work, laughs, tears, and the long hours of practice, planning, and studying have paid off for you. Everyone has a different experience in high school. Some of us loved it, and some of us do not care for it very much. Some of us wish we could stay forever. Some of us can't wait to experience new things. Winter high school has helped shape who each and every one of us are. And whether we believe they're not class of 2016, these people that are in the stands for you are your biggest supporters, teachers, motivators, or maybe even some of your biggest obstacles. On behalf of the class of 2016, 
I would like to thank all the faculty, family, friends for getting us to this point in our lives. A big thank you to our secretaries, Mrs. Gentilly and Mrs. Suma. Thank you guys for all your hard work and making me smile every day before the morning announcements. Mr. Crombie, thank you for calling me down to your office almost every day to the point where my classmates would know it was for me before my name, before my name was even said, just so we could send it to me. Though. I would also like to give a big thank you to my family, the most supportive out there, for helping me shape who I am today. Thanks for listening to me complain when I needed to. My friends, thank you for being there for me when I needed you the most. Teachers, thank you for allowing us to proceed as individuals and teaching us not only about school, but about life in general. Now this is a class of 2016. Let's get out there and show the world what we're really made of and dare to be someone that others would wish to be. Congratulations, class of 2016.